Thank you, Governor, for the very inspiring and very insightful speech. Um, you mentioned about trade, and everybody's watching about the trade war between the US and China. But faced with the trade war, China, instead of closing down, is continuing opening up and even speed up some of its reforms and the market. Um, you mentioned also in your speech RCEP as well as CPTPP as the trade packs that China is kind of currently actively pushing forward. So uh, how do you see the prospects of these two trade packs? Also because they're quite different. One is of much higher standard. Do you see the two of them are interlinked? Or so um, how would they integrate into help China to integrate into the global trading system? Uh, in my mind, I think the best choice is we have uh, uh, four global multilateral rules uh, on the trade and the investment. Uh, but in case that uh, we, people don't uh, agree with uh, each other, uh, there is uh, friction uh, uh, and uh, tariff wars. So uh, if uh, uh, we can have a uh, uh, smaller scope uh, of uh, global multilateral uh, rules, I think it's also uh, a good choice. Uh, now, uh, for today's world, uh, the world population is uh, something around uh, 7.5 billion. Uh, uh, that's uh, if uh, uh, the global trade regime, uh, the multilateral system, does not cover for 7.5 uh, uh, population, uh, for example, just uh, cover uh, 5 billion or 6 billion population. It's a still a very large system. It's, a, it's a still a very good choice. Uh, uh, if we review to see that uh, in 1985, around 1985, the total uh, global population was uh, uh, probably only 5 billion. So, uh, so what I say that uh, if uh, we use RCEP, uh, uh, CPTPP uh, to uh, set up a regional uh, that's uh, multilateral uh, trade and investment rule, I think it's a great thing. And I hope it can grip, uh, expand uh, to have more connection with Europe, with Latin America, with Africa, and then uh, that's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, can bring up uh, uh, tremendously the economic and the trade efficiency uh, and also the investment opportunity. Uh, looking back uh, uh, to the period before 1990, uh, I mean uh, from the end of World War II up to 1990, there were several systems. Uh, one is uh, uh, the GATT, uh, covered that's uh, most Western, com Western country and uh, free market economy. Another is so-called CMEC, so the Conference of Mutual Assistance uh, Country, led by the former Soviet Union and uh, Eastern European country. China was not included at that time because Ch at that time China was too poor. <laughs> they say that's only uh, uh, unilateral assistance to China, but China uh, at that time was not useful to assistance to the uh, CMEA country. Uh, there, there was the uh, UN cut uh, to have uh, uh, developed countries. They have their own opinion uh, and. Uh, uh, the claim for the international trade system. So uh, this, it, it can be understood that uh, uh, people may uh, have a different opinion and they try to uh, have their, uh, what they claim to be a best system for, for themselves. And through the competition, gradually people can realize that uh, which is a good system. Uh, but in case uh, some, some country try to escape, uh, then we have a phenomenon of uh, somebody called globe minus one or globe minus two. Uh, but I think, yeah, yeah, we can also yeah 
through the RSF uh, CPTPPs uh, to uh, have a second best uh, global multilateral system. And gradually, I believe, finally, that's a, uh, the, that's a global is going to reach a consensus to have a high standard uh, trade and investment system. Thank you. Thanks. So have the second best first and hope to move that to the mm. global system and revise it. Um, in order for China to further in this uh, global trade system, also, also often mentioned in the US-China trade talks as well, some of the policies in China are often mentioned and think needs to be addressed. Um, I'll list a few here, including continue opening up its financial markets, liberalizing investment rules, reducing subsidies to state-owned enterprises, and better protection of intellectual properties. How would you uh, address those issues? Uh, if I may put uh, this uh, in two uh, angles. The number one is that uh, domestically, uh, China need those uh, reform, to deepening those of reform. Uh, some, uh, we already have a consensus and already make a decision. For example, what you said, that the financial sector open, uh, opening up. But some of them are still in the process of debate and gradually may reach the higher level of consensus and the decision to deepening those of reform. Uh, China, uh, uh, after 40 years of economic reform and uh, open door policy, uh, basically people uh, understand very well that we need the reform. Uh, we need to do th uh, those of, uh, uh, things better. And we still uh, in the half uh, in the whole reform and uh, transition uh, period. Uh, so uh, in this sense, I mean, it's not because uh, of pressure of outsiders. Uh, it's uh, not because that we would like uh, uh, to join the international system, uh, but we, we uh, deeply realize that it's our internal need. The second angle is to say that uh, China uh, benefits a lot from uh, WTO. Uh, also from the early stage when China negotiated with GATT uh, in Uruguay around this, uh, that's, uh, so uh, it's, uh, it, we, we benefit from that. Uh, but in China, somebody also would like to create a very special Chinese ways uh, uh, of development uh, to say that uh, the, the Chinese uh, development strategy with uh, unique Chinese char characteristic. Uh, uh, but what I would like to say that uh, like uh, uh, many uh, sports, uh, like uh, football, basketball, volleyball, tennis, badminton, <laughs> when you try, try to, uh, to participate in international competition, uh, to participate in the championship, <laughs> then uh, you have to follow the rules. Uh, it's not uh, uh, very much uh, uh, important for you to argue whether the rule of basketball is uh, optimal, is the best or not. <laughs> Maybe it's uh, uh, for different country, uh, the tower, <laughs> but the people are different. So you, you may say that uh, I would like to have uh, the best rules of basketball like this, but it's uh, actually meaningless whether you, you participate in uh, international uh, event or not. So now it's also, I think, for China to, uh, to think about that uh, uh, if uh, we uh, are already highly involved in global economy, uh, that uh, uh, we need to carefully study those of uh, international rules and to think about uh, what kind of reform we can do, we can accelerate uh, to, uh, yeah, to uh, uh, have a, a deeper participation of a global system. Thank you. 
um, there's a question coming from the iPad um, on the technology and the tech code war. There are a lot of concerns about the mindset and increasing actions of imposing barriers and restrictions on trade and investment in technology. A lot of anxieties around. And how worried you are about the tech code war and the expansion of the decoupling? Uh, I think it's a very good uh, question. Uh, Personally, I'm uh, a little bit optimistic uh, for the global rules uh, in trade and investment. Uh, but the tech war is uh, uh, yeah, maybe a, a more serious matter. Uh, but however, as an economist, that's, uh, we see uh, the most knowledge and the technology actually are tradable. Uh, I actually can be acquired by uh, the investment. But however, uh, it takes time to, to, to uh, get the, uh, the research outcome in uh, technology. Uh, with some uh, uh, exception, for example, those of uh, very fundamental uh, science, it's, uh, they have a very special rules. But, uh, about, in my mind, about 80% of, of technology actually uh, is tradable. That's, that means that you can buy the patent, you can pay uh, the user, uh, use license, uh, uh, you can invest uh, in the R&D, uh, and you can buy uh, some of the company which uh, have a special technology. Uh, so, uh, while a large economy like China is the second largest economy, uh, gradually accumulates uh, uh, a lot of capital. Uh, yeah, surely, that's uh, it can develop its uh, technology, uh, and also that's uh, uh, to spend a lot of money in investment of R and D uh, facility. Looking back, uh, uh, that's uh, uh, 30 or 40 years ago, uh, uh, in China, there is uh, no uh, research and development condition at all. Uh, and uh, there is uh, no attraction to the talented people. Uh, uh, education uh, was also poor uh, because that's uh, not enough money <laughs> invested into the education. So the, the talented Chinese students go abroad and they study overseas. Uh, but 20 or 30 years later, situation started to, to change very obviously. Uh, yeah, many uh, Chinese university can, yeah, uh, can produce uh, very good talent uh, people. And, the tal and those uh, uh, students uh, uh, studied overseas, uh, they find the attraction to go home because uh, not only that's, uh, the, that's the living standard or the, or the convenience of the family, but also because they find out that uh, the R&D investment over there is two to three percent of GDP. In some uh, company like Huawei, it's uh, around ten percent of, uh, of uh, uh, net earnings are invested into R&D. And they also try to look at uh, the laboratory, uh, the equipment in the laboratory, and they find out it's quite advanced. Uh, in Shenzhen, when we look at uh, 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 genome uh, analyze uh, laboratory, we find that uh, uh, a very large amount of uh, genome analyzers over there. Uh, it's uh, the largest number uh, in the world. So this kind of change uh, bring the momentum for technology uh, uh, development. Uh, also, we see that uh, in today's world, you can always find that somebody is trying to steer technology, uh, try to uh, use a cybernet uh, 
uh, to attack a website to steal some things. But I think it, yeah, you should also find out there's uh, uh, along with economic development, along with uh, uh, that's, uh, the accumulation of capital, the, uh, the human talent, uh, uh, and the, the condition of r and d uh, that uh, technology uh, is, is already, in China, already got the track to have a fast uh, development. Uh, on the other hand, talking about education, I think there is nobody can effectively uh, block the knowledge uh, transformation, uh, knowledge uh, disperse uh, uh, along the globe. There are so many uh, academic uh, conference, uh, uh, there's symposium, seminars, <laughs> uh, uh, publications that actually uh, uh, the knowledge should be shared by the globe. Uh, one of uh, the serious arguments is that uh, one China, uh, some of Chinese company uh, spend money to acquire uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, a small company which have a technology uh, in Western country. Uh, whether this is uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, something indecent uh, I think actually it's, it's also a decent uh, investment, but if you don't want to sell them, so it's okay. Yeah. Uh, the Chinese side can still uh, uh, buy the patent or, or, to, or uh, to buy the uh, user license mm -hmm. to do that. So uh, I think uh, it's a little bit uh, exaggeration to uh, comment China on the technology development. And uh, I think that it's a little bit uh, naive to think that the bl blockage of technology exchange and uh, technology transfer uh, that uh, uh, can be effective. Uh, so uh, in my mind is that uh, uh, on the one hand, China, as, as your second question, that we we're, uh, go further to strengthen uh, our discipline and the deepening reform in terms of uh, protect uh, intellectual property rights, uh, in terms of uh, uh, whether there is a fast technology transfer uh, in joint venture uh, uh, establishment, or uh, whether there is uh, 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 any, any kind of illegal activity regarding uh, to the uh, commercial and the technological uh, 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 secret. So this is something uh, uh, we, we can do. But on the other hand, uh, we should also recognize that, uh, uh, that uh, the development uh, of education, the knowledge, uh, the technology, uh, which uh, actually already got into uh, uh, an inevitable uh, uh, fast track. Uh, that's, uh, I hope not only in China, but also we see a lot of things happening in India, uh, man, yeah, many things in Singapore. So, uh, this, uh, actually it's a, it's a good trend. Thank Something. you, thank you. Before we conclude this session, I want to say thank you for your candid insights and for your very encouraging signs. And I will cite one sentence by our peer uh, economist, says, if you want to seek Governor Joe's monument, survey China's economy. And after retiring from 15 years as the governor of PBOC, now he put your weight behind not just the opening up and prosperity of China, but also the region as well. And thank you for sharing with us today. Thanks all. Thank you.